Yo peeps, Mischief here. Today we're going to be looking into 15 minute cities, ULEZ, all the taxation that's been put around the, the climate issue in the UK. So, here we go. Cue the start sequence. Yeah! There we go. Okay, so I thought I'd start getting into some very British conspiracies, okay? And uh, looking into things that's actually going on over here because we get ignored so much, so much from our own news, from our own government, from our own mayors. Um, it's, it's absolutely disgusting. This country is so overlooked and we are so persecuted by the rest of the world. So... Firstly, then, I want to I get into the 15-minute um, cities thing, okay? So, Oxford has recently become a new part of this 15-minute city. And if you've not heard of a 15-minute city, the general idea behind it is that you would be able to cycle or walk roughly within 15 to 20 minutes of your house, your work, uh, the cinema, the park, etc., etc., uh, now, that sounds great, doesn't it? Until you start thinking about it. Actually, when you go, well, where's my car going to be then? Oh, well, you won't have a car because you can walk everywhere. Well, what if I want to go and see my parents who live in another town or city miles away? Oh, you have to get public transport. But then you've got to pay for the public transport to get and make sure the links are actually there so you can leave the area and be able to get out of this area. And what about the businesses within this 15 minutes walking? Well, if they don't have any trade from the outside area coming in or passing trade through cars or anything like that, well, then you don't have these businesses anymore, do you? So all these things that are starting to accumulate now about the climate crisis, these all stem from the UN and the WEF, the World Health Organization. They are pushing all this stuff through countries like us. Take ULEZ, okay, the ultra low emission zone in London, put forward by Sadiq Khan and originally by Boris Johnson for the centre of London, okay, to cut commission, uh, emissions, okay, and um, clean up the air. Well, if you don't know what this is, actually, it's a charge of £12 to drive your car in and around the centre of London. But it's now been expanded and expanded and expanded to include more and more of London. And if you don't have a compliant car, so an electric car or a hybrid or something along those lines that fits in with EU and UN resolution um, standards, mainly EU standards, which I don't understand why we're following EU standards. We are no longer part of the EU. We are a sovereign nation. And uh, the... ULED zone has been basically pushed out to the very outskirts of London. Now, luckily, one of the boroughs has turned round and voted out Labour. They basically kicked him out and said, no, we, we don't want this. Sadiq Khan's not listening to us. You're not listening to us. So they've lost the by-election there. That's not being promoted anywhere. It's only just been put on BBC News. There's been protests outside the BBC for this ULEZ to be stopped in London. And I've got some clips of a protest for you. Uh, it was filmed by the brown car guy. Uh, first time I've watched the channel, so I'm going to link him below. Brilliant channel, by the way. Um, and he's been out to these protests that no one's covering. So here we go. Here's some clips uh, from some of these protests. <laughs> issue properly. Last Thursday, when they got a shock from the by-election in Uxbridge, they had to wake up and start reporting bits and pieces, but they still don't get it. Why won't they come out today and talk to people? Why won't they report it? What's, what's their raison d'etre? If you look at the result in Uxbridge, nine people who voted voted for candidates who'd expressed some degree of scepticism about ULEZ. 
Phenomenal, 94%. And the BBC doesn't want to cover that. <laughs> as, as, a, as a future mayor of London, don't trample over Londoners, please. That's the last thing you need to do. <laughs> that, that, that would be a great skeleton in my cabin. <laughs> Howard, we're here. We're just uh, finding a little bit of sanctuary outside of the uh, out, out of the rain, but we're here outside BBC Centre. Quite a big turnout. Yeah, it's great news. A lot of people. It shows just how people are really incensed, yeah. and that was shown last on Thursday with the Uxbridge uh, yeah. uh, by-election. Yeah. And uh, I've said time and time again to Keir Starmer, I've met him four or five weeks ago in Port Cullis House. Yeah. I said, why has he not sacked or or uh, suspended yeah. uh, Sadiq Khan from his party? Because yeah. he's been dishonourable, dishonest. He's manipulated public consultations and uh, he came back and said well he's very popular i said well look at last thursday's vote well, i'm not so sure about that <laughs> but also isn't it time that keir Starmer became a little bit more decisive about what he wants to do when it comes to you Liz? well as we know he's famous for flip-flopping all over the place isn't he look at the north sea oil uh, licenses etc it's simple listen to the people yeah. the majority of the people not the lycra clad spads the people yeah. you know right right up in, uh, involved in environmental issues focus on what matters to people's pockets yeah. small businesses, plumbers, electricians, the uh, the midwife who has to yeah. do a double shift overnight, yeah. and these sorts of things who have to pay twice and it's not worth them working. But also we have to keep responding to the same things that Khan says over and over again regarding the debt and the pollution in the city. And the thing is like, I just come here on the tube, you can smell the pollution down there. Right now we're here, we're in a crowded part of London, it feels fine. Well I've just held an air quality uh, uh, control unit which I used recently yeah. in the underground. Here it's just said good, 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 all yeah. particular. Yeah. And particulates are the most dangerous ones. And exactly. guess where the most prevalent? You just alluded yeah. to it. 1,800% yeah. more yeah. particulates in the underground. Yeah. I went to 15 stations and went through them. It was astonishing. Yeah. And as you say, you can taste it. Yeah. And I was uh, uh, called by a person who one, uh, works underground this morning, and he wants to, he's going to do a bit of whistleblowing. And I'll make yeah. sure you're involved with this. Okay, cool. But he wants to be interviewed because he told me, here's a picture of me when I start a shift. He blew his nose, it's yeah, all clean. It's, it's then horrible. he blew his nose after oh, the end no. of the shift. I'm not telling you what it looks like. It's not going to help anybody. It's just going to penalise hard-working people of London. It's not going to contribute anything to the air quality. After all, as you've seen in your videos, the pollution on the underground is far worse, and there isn't a toxic air problem in London. And that's basic, and it's nothing but a cash grab on the hard-working people of London. And you'll find it there. Well, you need it on the underground anyway. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Matthew, yeah. I think you ladies are suddenly trending now, isn't it? It seems to be in all of the news channels and well, everything. I do, mean, you think that the, the, do you think that we're finally going to have a serious conversation about this? Well, we, we've been having serious conversations from day one. It's the mayor who's not been listening, yeah. right? We had people's question time where you and I met and I asked I asked the mayor, you know, are you listening to London? Yeah. Uh, you listen to Londoners, we don't want you, yeah. Les, etc, etc. He replied saying, well, how much is a child's life worth? Well, yeah. the answer to him, £12.50, but we won't yeah. get into that. Yeah. The point is that we're having serious conversations because yeah. I'm a local councillor yeah. and I've talked to residents whose businesses are going to go bust. Yeah. I've talked to staff in restaurants who are yeah. asking for pay rises yeah. to cover you les otherwise they're not going to come to work but don't you feel that discussion in the mainstream media of you les has been marginalized and pushed aside right yeah. until now maybe it has until now and i think yeah. i think the by-election in uxbridge is going to make a yeah. lot of difference not not straight away but i think in the coming weeks you're going to see a real different attitude towards this and a different attitude to to a lot of mps both labor and conservative to be honest yeah. with you in the way they think about this situation so i mean so we've already so seen the labor party start tearing its apart we've seen Angela Rayner say that we need to we need to rethink this Keir's called um, uh, you know said to Sadiq Khan he needs to have a think again listen we've been saying this for months this isn't a party political issue this is a London issue this is something which people do not want people said no in the consultation they're saying no right now and this mayor isn't listening the people as I said in my question and as I will keep saying every time I'm asked the point is we elect the mayor we can unelect him the 2nd of may 2024 is the next election khan is running i don't know if he'll still be on the ballot paper by that point but we need to kick khan out and vote for a mayor that actually puts londoners first listen to londoners listen to the people we need to scrap you les stop the ules expansion and restore some faith in our city so there you go as you can see there's plenty of people outside the bbc protesting that chancellor guy i, I loved him uh you know our councillor for look one at local governments and uh we don't want this no one wants it you know that's everybody there everybody's saying we don't want this and the fact that the london underground is the 
<laughs> it's polluted area and nothing's being done about it. Yet, let's tax the cars. Let's tax people driving around for work. Plumbers, window cleaners, fucking drivers, you know. Let's tax these people instead when you can't afford bread. You can't afford milk. So it seems to me that all these climate ideas, these climate policies, these things that are being put in place are money-grabbing schemes, ways to take our freedoms away from us, way for us to stop doing whatever we want to do. And uh, if you live in England, okay, you you should know this. And just listen to this if you're not from the UK. So we've got probably eight or nine major cities, okay, major cities. Shit old London, right. Sheffield, Birmingham, that's the one, Birmingham, Leeds, okay, we've got Newcastle, Liverpool, Manchester, all right, they're sort of the main sort of big cities, okay, then we've got places like York and Doncaster, you know, Derby, Nottingham, places like that, smaller, smaller towns, but in between these places, yeah, especially up north and down to the left and west and right of uh, London, uh, there's nothing. There's literally fucking nothing. Here is a map, okay? So on this map, you will see this is the UK. This is the whole of the UK. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take your time here. Look over this. Look over this lovely map of the UK. Okay? We are a tiny island, okay? I can drive from where I am in Derby down to Portsmouth in three and a half hours. I can drive to my cousins at Clapton-on-Sea in roughly three hours. I can drive up to Scotland. I don't know why I'd want to, but if I wanted to drive to Scotland, I could drive to Scotland in less than three hours and be at the very top of Scotland in about five hours. You know, I could be out in Wales Again, I don't know why I want to go, but if I wanted to go to Wales, I could be there, you know, in a very short period of time. And to say there's that many people live in England, look at all the fucking green that we have. Look at all the green areas. Just look at it. Okay? This is going to be another topic I'm going to be covering in, in, in another video. But all these areas are green. Our farmland, open fields. So why does, why does our... Food costs us so much in the UK. We, we could literally grow all the fucking food that we need in the UK in all of this green bit that you see on this map. All of it. I, I just don't... Under, and we are on an island? Yeah. What, what Wave power. Yeah, to power stuff. Solar power. Wind power, for God's sake. All these things, Okay. The coal industry, actually, I think should be started back up again. I mean, my ancestors were all miners. What's, what's wrong with that? You know, there's plenty of other things that I, I could get into. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going off on a sort of tangent here. But what my main point is, is that you're saying that we have to have these charges in place. We have to have these 15-minute cities incorporated into our lives in the UK. When, actually, we live on one of the greenest fucking islands in the world. In the fucking world. And the places that are polluted, you don't want to know about. The London Underground, okay? People can blow their nose after walking out of the London Underground and it's covered in black shit because you're breathing in toxic fucking fumes, nitrogen and shit, okay? So what you do down there is put green places in, put trees in, put plants, put a ventilation system, just like they have in Moscow, on their networks. It's not very hard, people. It really isn't. I don't understand what all this is about. So we've got Sadiq Khan just ignoring absolutely everybody in London and going, oh yeah, it's fine. Well, of course it's fine. You're a fucking millionaire. You don't have to worry about this shit, about changing your car, about going to work. So if you work during the day, right, but you finish your night shift, obviously the following morning, you'd have to pay 12 quid to go to work, 12 quid to come home. And if you were working that night as well, you didn't have to pay 12 quid a fucking again. Again. To then come back home again. That's 20 something quid a day just to go to work. Who can afford that? I can barely afford to fucking eat. You know, I have to sort my kids out and I sort the house out and everything else. And then after that, whatever. Okay. But I can barely afford anything. For fuck's sake, I filmed this in a shed. 
<laughs> Do you know what I mean? If you want someone who's real, if you want a real fucking person, a real person of the people, here I am. I'm filming this from a fucking shed for you, okay? So people like Sadiq Khan, we don't want you OOLED zone, okay? Nobody wants it. And I've said this for years, things like the BBC license and these fucking OOLED zones and all this shit. If everybody actually just didn't fucking pay it, just don't. Everyone going to say someone. No, it is that simple. If everybody tomorrow down in London, where these ULED zones are, went, fuck you, I am not paying this shit, got in their car and just drove, right? And then when you get the bill, you go, I'm not fucking paying it. If everybody, everybody went, no, I ain't paying it. What are they going to do? They're going to take us all to court? Do you do realise there are more of us than there are of these arseholes in the government? Than there are of these arseholes that they can put in power through the police and everything? There are more of us. More of us. When are you going to realise this, people? The BBC licence fee. I've never paid it. I refuse to fucking pay it. They can fuck off. I don't watch any of their crap. At all. At all. Never have. Don't want to. Don't want to know. Your propaganda, okay? If everybody in the country just went, no, I'm not fucking paying it. Why Why do I have to pay you? All right, my company, as part of my company, we do building works, okay? We do window cleaning. We do office cleaning, okay? We do full landscaping and all sorts of stuff. So am I going to drive past everyone's driveway, right, or windows and go, you owe me money? And people want to go, what? Well, my company, we install driveways. We also do roofing. Uh, we do window cleaning. In fact, everything on your house, we do. So, by theory, by the logic of the BBC, you owe me money. You'd tell me to fuck off, wouldn't you? You'd go, no, fuck off. It's my drive, my windows. And I'd go, yeah, but I clean windows. <laughs> you go, but you don't clean my windows, do you? It doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> You have windows and a driveway. I install them. Pay me. You'd, you'd knock me out and drag me to the end of the fucking street, wouldn't you? You'd go, no, I'm not giving you any money. Why do we give the BBC money? Why are we giving these people money? Why are we accepting this? So I've got a picture here for you. A little clip of a, a guy, basically, who's been going around taking down these fucking cameras for you, Les. Um, the ticket cameras. I've got to applaud you. I've got to applaud you, pal. Because if someone doesn't stand up to this, if we don't actually stand up in this country and actually take things... Because in this country, in England, we just let everything gloss over us. It doesn't happen to us. UFOs don't happen to us, okay? Wars don't happen here, all right? You know, oh, we're not being controlled. We are the most surveilled country in the fucking world. We have the least freedom of speech out of any country, pretty much, Okay? If you if you get taken to court, you're in an argument saying you call someone. I don't know, let's let's say you call someone a badger, all right, and they're and they're offended by the word badger. And in the English dictionary, badger might mean fucking stupid twat, right? According to some idiot who does law, right? This word badger doesn't mean small animal. It means fucking stupid twat. And that's what you called him. And that's in law, right? And you go, well, no, I didn't. And my freedom of expression allows me to say badger because I use the word badger to describe someone who's an idiot or I use it to describe someone who's a badger, a, a rodent-type animal. And they'll go, no, no, no. According to our hate speech <laughs> violations now, you've just, uh, in violation of hate speech, so we're going to send you to prison or fine you. And you go, no, 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 because... If, I'm, if I want to use words to say something to someone and call somebody out about something, I should be allowed to do that. And they'll go, no, that's hate. No, that's not hate, is it? That's freedom of speech. All these infringements go towards this. Pretty soon in the UK, everywhere will be a user zone. Everywhere will be a 15-minute city. You won't be allowed to have a car. You won't be allowed to leave where you fucking are. You won't be allowed to leave your little town or go anywhere. And... All you kids watching this now, if there are any kids watching this, going, look at this old man ranting, blah, blah, blah. You'll be the ones who have fucking caused it. And then you'll be sat there in a couple of years' time in your stupid little box house with your fucking bicycle outside, 
Not being able to go anywhere with a cinema 20 yards of fucking way from me. You'll be with your kids going, can we go and see me down on the ground, Dad? No, we can't because they live at the fucking edge of the sea and we're not allowed to go anywhere anymore. That's where it's going. That is that is not crazy conspiracy theory. Yeah, if you want to lock everyone in their houses, pretty much, okay, and make it easier for you to section off fucking towns and cities into 15-minute zones where you can shut things down and not let anyone out, yeah, and... Part of that, to build up to it, is to charge everyone for using their car so to get rid of their cars in the first place or buy a compliant car from you who's only selling these compliant cars so you can make more money to then charge people to drive around this city that you're making money off them anyway without actually cleaning any of the air or cleaning any of the places that need cleaning or putting any of the money back to education or to health or to the fucking secretary or anything like that. And you're just creaming it off and using it to go and fucking have a wank in the Bahamas. That's not on, is it? So, this is the first of my many episodes I'm going to be doing about the climate crisis, about more things in the UK, more corruption from our politicians, from our mayors, okay? From people that don't want to cover things that are happening across the world or want to distract you with something else, like the BBC do. They'll call me a right-wing activist or something because I don't want a UZ zone. Well, I'm as anything far from right-wing as you fucking can get, to be quite fair, Um but that won't matter to anyone else because what I'm saying is, no, we can't afford it. We can't pay for it. It doesn't actually clean anyone's air up. And you're saying that 4,000 children a year have died from asthma. Suck my cock. I'm sorry. They haven't, have they? Really? All right? They haven't. And if you want to say that, okay, they've probably been on the fucking tube in London that's full of shit. Right? Clean that up. Clean that up. I mean, Sadiq, I will say this to you. I'm going to address you directly. Trying to legalise cannabis, I'm, I'm with you there, okay? Right? But that's a ploy, isn't it? That's a ploy. Oh, I want to legalise cannabis. While taking all your freedoms and rights away and everything else and making money off you. But let's do this and distract you for five minutes. Well, this is something you've always wanted. Look over here. Ooh, follow my hands. Don't look over there. What's this? That's your money, but you can't have that. La, la, la. By the way, we've just taken away all your rights and you can't go anywhere anymore. La, 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 la. Oh, you want to own a small business, did you? Oh, well, go fuck yourself because you now can't afford to drive anywhere or do anything or afford the transport costs or your customers can't afford you to actually turn up to their house to do the work because you have to travel through somewhere there's no fucking roads anymore to get there because we blocked them all off for cyclists that is not a world i want to live in a dystopian world i mean a 15 minute city isn't that just a village isn't that just a village and you have to leave your fucking village to go somewhere else anyway because there's fuck all in it ah i quite enjoyed this little rant actually so this is my little piece on here. I hope you enjoyed the clips from uh, uh, Brown Car Guy. Go and check him out because it's fucking great, a great little channel. Only just discovered it. But he's really on top of this. Um, so what do you guys think? Do you think the BBC should actually fucking cover stuff fairly and properly and show us these protests? I bet, no, I bet you didn't even know there's protests about it. I bet you didn't even know there's actually court cases being put forward to stop Sadiq Khan from putting these ULED zones in to stop people doing these 15 minute cities have actually been proposed by Klaus Schwab and the UN we don't want it I am not saying that the climate isn't changing okay right just to prove my point right now I'm not going to show you exactly where I am but uh, right now <laughs> it's 12 degrees it's 12 degrees in Derby Okay, 12 degrees. It's pissing down with rain. It's been pissing down with rain, all right, for the past three weeks. Yeah. Mildly warm. Mildly warm. It's summer. The kids are off school. Where's my global warming? Okay, I want a beachfront fucking property, all right? You're worried about the sea level rising, okay, and carbon emissions, okay? It's been proven that carbon emissions have been higher at points where the Earth's been colder. Carbon emissions has been lower when the Earth's been at its warmest. Now, obviously, we do produce excess gases and fossil fuels and stuff, but for God's sake, there's people burning millions of tyres in Africa and India, right? No one over here is doing that, are they, in the West, okay? We're not doing that, unless you're in America and you decide to set oil things on fire and a train that explodes and some other things, but it's, it's absolute hypocritical bollocks. They can fly around in their jets 
like you know, drive around in our cars, take and cream off taxes, but we have to unscrew a light bulb, carry around bags for fucking life, and not drive a car over again to save the planet and give them loads of money. It doesn't make any fucking sense, does it? So in my next episode that's coming up, I'm going to be covering that massive green belt, okay? Uh, because I'm hopefully going to be planning a trip down to Aylesbury and Avebury, which is that way. And I just want to show you exactly how much farmland and how much green space, how much forest we have in the UK. Shit tons of it. There's shit tons of it. So we don't have a climate crisis in the UK. Oh, and by the way, you know the pictures that you see, the maps on BBC that are all red? Four years ago, they were normal and green, right? Normal. We haven't got a heat that ah, wave thing. We, we, no, we haven't. If we did, it wouldn't be fucking 12 degrees here, would it, right now? And pissing down with rain. No, it'd be lovely and boiling and fucking 30, 40 degrees. Everyone goes, oh my God, 30, 40 degrees. I'd fucking love that. I'd love that. I could train all day and sit outside. Fantastic. Right, peeps. I hope you enjoyed this little rant. I hope I brought something to your attention. So, um... If you want to stop this ULES thing, there's plenty of places online to go and sign petitions for people in London. If you don't live in London, if you live outside of London, please sign a petition for them because this will be coming our way. It'll be moving further up north. 15 minutes cities, all this crap. It'll be for your climate, for this. Let's stop driving here. It's all bollocks. It's all bollocks. Sheffield, which is not, not far from me, is one of the greenest cities in the fucking country, okay? My uncle, my uncle David... David Bradley, right? He used to work for the council. He was a designer. He designed parks, designed freeways, designed all sorts of stuff. He made Sheffield the greenest city before any of this emission stuff or anything because he understood that the trees needed to be in the city to take away the smog and to take away everything else. And that's what they do. And by more carbon in there, we get bigger trees, we get greener flora, we get better stuff. So... This episode is dedicated to my Uncle David, who knew and understand about conservation and climate. Okay? That's where I got a lot of my knowledge from. So, look forward to the next upcoming episodes that I'm going to be doing. Yeah, we've got some more UFO stuff to cover, but, um, yeah. This is the real conspiracy here, people. People are trying to pull over, uh, pull the wool over the eyes of the UK public. And I, for one, ain't going to fucking stand for it anymore. So, if you want to follow me... Please stick a like, stick a comment. Let me know what you think about our government, our politicians, and this bull crap that they keep pulling out. Meanwhile, we're all paying £5 million at Asda or Aldi for his dinner. Can't go anywhere, can't do anything, can't go on holiday, and can't see anyone. While they're scraping and skimming money off the top of us, and then charging us more stuff to even just drive and go to fucking work. It's not on. Please leave me a comment, and please fight back against these arseholes. Sorry for the swearing, but this it needs it. <laughs> it's a British episode. I do apologise. So uh, until next time, old chaps, I shall see you on the flip side. Have a lovely day. Do you live protest? She's my daughter. <laughs> I think it's 100% worth it for the right cause as well, because we need to think far ahead into the future. And again, in a cost of living crisis, this exacerbates poverty, especially on support workers and people who don't have that high income. Do you think more young people should be thinking about this more carefully? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. However, I do feel that to a certain extent, young people have become a bit more conditioned to not yeah. think further ahead because we're kind of sheltered. Especially when we're privileged. We yeah. are privileged to a certain extent. Yeah. So we don't think about people outside our sphere of influence. Yeah.